Well, I grew up in a Christian home, um, went to church every Sunday. So I accepted Jesus at a pretty young age. I don't remember much about it. Um, and there isn't really a turning point since then where I was like, oh, now I know for sure I'm saved. But throughout my life, there's been a lot of um, moments where I've gotten closer and um, understood specific ways that um, I am sinful and need Jesus as my savior. I came to know that I needed Jesus because um, I, knew, I knew that I was a sinner and I knew that Jesus died on the cross for my sins to take all my sins away, the ones that I've done and the ones that I will do. I'd always like believed that like Jesus was like the all powerful one or like God was the one in control, but I never like felt a reason to believe it. I just would always say I did because I didn't know what else to say. And so I would start memorizing Bible verses because I had anxiety and it would really help me to like know that something was there. And so I memorized one of my favorite Bible verses was, um, do not be afraid for I'm with you. Do not be terrified for I'm your God. I'll make you strong and help you. I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand and I'll always do what is right. And that one I would, say at bed every night and it would help me through like lots of things. And a, a couple, like a month ago, um, Pastor Phil, yeah, he um, asked me to read a verse in front of the church. And when I did it, I was really, really scared. And so I thought, what would someone do if they were scared? <laughs> and I thought they'd probably ask God for their strength. And so I prayed to him right before I went up, and I asked him, and he gave it to me. And when I got in the car after church, I knew that I had experienced what everyone describes their experience when they know they want to get baptized, or they, I believe then I was sure that God was the one in control, and he was the most powerful one. Born and raised as a Russian Orthodox, especially in my earlier years of childhood, and then uh, and then uh, sometime, um, I'd say, teenager years, that was the time when I uh, steered away from God and uh, just um, didn't recognize Him anymore. There's been some changes in my, in my parents' lives uh, that perhaps played a role in me steering away from God. And um, yeah, and then uh, many years after that, when I came to the United States, I had lied about um, uh, canceling a surgical procedure that I was scheduled for. And I wanted to save my face. And so basically I lied to my doctor about the reasons that I want to cancel the surgery. And so after I lied, immediately my heart was pretty much crushed. And I felt such a heavy, heavy burden on my heart. It was not really something I had felt before. It was so powerful that I think God has worked in my heart and said that you, you, know, you, you don't have to lie. And so I called on the phone the same night, I called to my mentor. And, and, and of course, during this conversation, I told him that, hey, look, there is some, I know there is some, some, some superpower that much, much stronger, much greater than me. I don't know what it was, but it just, it struck me so, so heavy that um, I, I cannot find a spot. I cannot find a place. I'm not myself. I, I cannot do nothing. I cannot sleep. I cannot concentrate. I'm just losing it. And so um, that was the moment where my mentor perhaps felt that this was the time when I truly repented from my sin, when I'm truly you know, felt that there was something much, much, you know, greater and, and bigger than me, and that I, I shouldn't be doing that. And uh, then he gifted me with my first Bible. <laughs> so I started re reading my Bible, and uh, we had hours and hours of discussions every week.
couple hour, hour and a half, two hours just discussing, you know, the gospel. The gospel message is that all are sinful, including myself, and that can't be denied or ignored. There, there's no way we can um, reach the level of perfection that God calls us to and that we need in order to have relationship with Him. And the only way that we are able to, since we are so sinful and fallen, is through Jesus and through His sacrifice and accepting His perfect life and death as an atonement for our sins so that we can live in relationship with God. God made it, we broke it, and Jesus fixed it. And that kind of, to me, it described how I think about the whole Bible, that it's the way that God, no matter what, He always has the plan for what's gonna happen. Something I love about Jesus is that He always just, He always forgives. He's like, not gonna say, oh, this sin is like, too bad, it like, I'm not gonna forgive you this time. But even if it's like a very bad sin, it's just gonna like, he's just always gonna forgive you. What we have to do is to accept Christ in our heart and believe in him that he is the son of God. Simple, yet almost impossible to really understand that with a human brain and wrap our hand, uh, heads around this. So, um, I'm excited to be baptized because there's like, a symbolism to it. It's not just dunking yourself in water. It's just like showing that when we go down, it's kind of like when he died, and then when he when we raise, we raise with him, and we have like a new birth, and that's with the Holy Spirit, and we trust in him. I trust Jesus, and I want to live for him for the rest of my life. This is my sacred confession of faith that Jesus Christ is my Lord. This is my sacred confession of faith that Jesus Christ is my Lord. This is my sacred confession of faith that Jesus Christ is my Lord. This is my sacred confession of faith that Jesus Christ is my Lord.